There once was a man named Gold Roger, who was king of the pirates. He had fame, power, and wealth beyond your wildest dreams. Before they hung him from the gallows, these were the final words he said. Our perspective is yours for the taking, but you'll have to join us first. We left everything we debated at the Yonko table. Ever since, pirates from all over the world set sail for the Grand Line, searching for the Yonko table, the table that will make their dreams come true. Yo! Ya yo, ya yo, folks. Welcome to the latest and the greatest from the Yonko table. That is the voice of Grandmaster Hoop coming at you from the void, because that's right. We've been sent to the void to live out our days with the rest of the greater marvel universe because we've been pruned and we've been sitting here because we don't matter just like deadpool and wolverine that's right folks we are talking about deadpool and wolverine the 34th film in the mcu franchise the marvel cinematic universe the second sequel to 2016's deadpool and officially the first film to incorporate the greater mutant and x-men franchise characters into the mcu officially we are here to deep dive deadpool and wolverine has been long awaited uh goodness gracious the mcu's in quite a state of array did this film do what it needed to do for those mcu naysayers or is this film just another kind of trash and a big heap of trash that some would say the MCU has put out lately? Goodness gracious. With me as always is fellow Yonko, Dr. Jace Attorney. Dr. Jace Attorney, Deadpool and Wolverine. Yay or nay? They won me over in the first five minutes with that musical intro okay and if you've seen the movie you know what intro that is okay <laughs> that's all i'll say that's and the movie could have ended there and i would have walked out saying Bull. the mcu no. is saved it's saved we're done okay. okay okay bold words bold words let's see who else is joining us here in the void tonight dr mondo one of the mcu's biggest haters slash critiques slash very up and down relationship is the mcu save dr mondo with deadpool and wolverine deadpool is marvel jesus i'm just gonna say it like that deadpool is marvel genius genius jesus whatever you want to put it i love the movie i was laughing from start to finish wow so much fun i was so happy with this movie okay okay he resurrected and saved us all from our sins who would have thought Dr. Mondo would be on back on board? We'll see how long this lasts. Uh, and being back on board the MCU. Uh, I, I'm with you too. Um, Deadpool and Wolverine. Quite a fun outing. Um, now, see, y'all like to say I have a bias. I have many critiques. You of this do film. have a bias. Let's set the record straight. You do have a bias. I have many critiques of this film, but overall, I could say this is a this is a huge step for what may come next in the MCU. If they can play their cards right, this is really big, and this is very good. I think there was a lot of great stuff here, um, but yeah, uh, uh, well, we'll get into the nitty gritty. But um, let's, let's 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 just do some general stuff real quick. All right. Uh, I don't know if y'all know this, although this technically being Deadpool 3, this is officially no longer the Fox X-Men franchise. Like, uh, it's like it's a reset for the Deadpool film franchise. Like, if you go look at the X-Men franchise on Wikipedia, this is not listed under there at all. Which right, I find, wasn't that assumed? Like, based I don't know. On the I, acquisition? I, I, thought it, I thought it would still be there. I thought, you know, no, it officially ended in 2020. So this is their this is a homecoming. They're home. This is their Spider-Man homecoming. I I believe it. Uh he they both have the best suits they've ever had ever. The two of them. The, this Deadpool outfit shits all over uh the prior two. 
Um, this one was a lot shinier and nicer. I give didn't me, realize. Yes, yeah. like the comic. Give me. I don't need the leather straps to, to show me how serious and toned these characters are. Give me the colors. Give me the colors. These were colorful. That's all I needed. I mean, uh, 24 years it took for us to. We'll we'll come back to the big ending bit with Wolverine, but to see Hugh Jackman 24 years finally donning the yellow and blue, uh, quite a sight. Quite a Iconic. sight. Iconic moment. Very. Well deserved and long awaited. We could have gotten this. Could they have done this years ago? Or is the black leather suits the only thing they could have done? You know why they did the black leather suits back then, right? Yes, yes. You, yes. Uh, the Matrix. It, it's true. They didn't come out and said it's because of the Matrix. That was that was the main reason why. That was the cool thing at the time. They wanted these movies to succeed. They thought if they did colorful clothes, people were not going to watch it. They saw Hugh Jackman in X1 with spandex, yellow spandex. They're going to say, ew, what is that? That's not cool. Dumb. And then you don't get your X2. You don't get your X3. You don't get any of them. So they made the choice at the time. They had well, to make that. Well, we could have we could have lived without X3, but that's another story. It, correct. <laughs> yes, we definitely could have done without X3. Um, but yeah, no, this um, this film is a tentpole for a couple of things. One, Deadpool officially now in the MCU, but also Hugh bringing over. And dare I say, um, this might be the greatest Deadpool performance. And after 24 years, I never, I didn't think we would get a elevated Wolverine performance. Like, you know, been there, done that. Logan being the pinnacle of it all. I, I, like, Hugh Jackman is just one of the greatest actors of our time. Like when you say performance, you mean like Ryan Reynolds playing Deadpool. This was his best performance as that character yes. out of all the Deadpools? Correct. Okay. Correct. And maybe it's elevated with the presence of Hugh, but I definitely feel... I didn't, I didn't think you could do much more with Wolverine as a character, and yet Hugh somehow... Mind you, I guess it's a variant somehow was able to make this one feel different from when we last saw him. And I feel that's that's major props. Take a character you've been doing for 24 years that you damn near perfected. No, I'm sorry, perfected. And then they tell you, you got to give us something new with it. And he did it. I mean, I feel like more or less it's kind of, he was more or less playing like his Logan counterpart, uh, a Wolverine that's like really down in the dumps uh upset about how he let down his friends and he, he's miserable not saying it wasn't bad but i feel like he was playing that version of wolverine but what made this one different is he had to bounce that off of a character like deadpool who's a joke and makes a joke out of everything versus in logan he was bouncing that off of um the the kid in that movie uh laura uh, laura Daphne. laura Daf sure. X Daphne X Keen, yes. Daphne Keen, yes. He had to bounce that off of her. So two different dynamics in both movies, but I, I felt like he was playing that same version of Logan, but obviously with different backstories as to why they were pissy in each of them. No, and I think also it's like they're both dealing with regret, but here you have, I think it's like also in Logan, you have a Wolverine that's like at the same time nearing the end of his life to a certain yeah. degree. And he's trying to almost... Uh, indirectly like cements his legacy and so forth here you have a wolver uh, a wolverine that's still kind of like in his peak in his prime but he still has these regrets and at the same time yes the characters are different that he has to bounce off uh off all those feelings and now i think it's like he has truly the tools and the opportunity to really make up for what he did wrong at least or what he thinks he did wrong but yeah like i Hugh Jackman is Wolverine. The same way that Johnny Depp is Jack Sparrow and you can never get another Jack Sparrow, you can never get another Wolverine if it's not Hugh Jackman. And as Deadpool said, you're working till you're 90. <laughs> I don't care what Hugh says. He's taking that paycheck every goddamn oh, time yeah. they show it. At this rate? At this rate? Yes, 100%. No, no, 100%. I'm saying I, I cannot see him not reprising that yeah. at, at the time of recording this opening weekend box office for grossing is peaking 400 million it's over 400 million so you know he was looking at his bank account saying well 
I don't gotta put away the claws just yet. <laughs> well, he genuinely likes the role too, but he likes given, the role. He's given gonna... the given the ending of the movie, I think there's a couple of things you can do with him and another character where you know some somewhat of a passing of a torch. Uh, we'll come back to that, but dare I say, only a couple of Wolverine performances elevate the character. And I will say this was one of them that elevated the Wolverine character. Like, for example, X3 did nothing for the character of Wolverine. Performance wise. What do you mean? He was uh, in love with Jean Grey. I don't care. I don't care. Wow. I don't care. No, it, it, this is this is and like, you know, y'all saying bouncing off of Ryan. I don't know. That bit was a pleasure while balancing the emotional depth of the character. A grade, a grade. This film, as we know, was going to be a really big deal with regards to, and we'll get into the nitty gritty of it. Let me just ask right now, did they do a good job incorporating the Deadpoolisms of Deadpool in the first MCU film? Did this still feel like a Deadpool film or did this feel, uh, what's the word, censored, do you think? Where do we stand? Did did they knock it out of the park? Oh, in no way. That, that yeah, it, it was it was spot on. It was yeah, spot they on. It up. Yeah. They <laughs> there was not a moment where I was watching this and I thought, did did Disney give the the, the go ahead to censor that? N no. It, it, this might as well have been in the Fox universe in terms of like uh censorship for the Deadpool character. I, I could not tell the difference. It was beat for beat exactly what they wanted to do it just felt like a fo like the fox movie and they just put the disney stamp on it that's it exactly can this be replicated will we see more of this will we see more of disney venturing into this r-rated territory we'll we'll see i mean we'll see they already greenlit um blade blade yeah. blade is a they kevin said blade will be rated r it'll be their next r-rated Lick. So I I imagine the violence and action and gore will be there, um, but I, I I appreciate Disney allowing Deadpool to kind of you know take be shots itself. at it. Right, right. Uh, they were very open about some of the meta jokes in here, and fourth wall breaks. Oh, yeah. So I, I I love the okay. self -roast. I love the self roast throughout the movie. That mm. is I just love that. It's like I feel like everything they were saying. I feel heard. Everything they're saying, I have been. Now you feel heard. You feel. You feel your point is lifted now. Listen. Oh my God, Doctor Vonda. When they made some of these jokes in the movie, I would turn to. I would turn to Hoop and say, "You see, they're making fun of you <laughs> for for liking the bad ones." And it's like it's okay. It's okay to laugh at them. It's okay. You don't have to Wakanda forever. Ever, all the MCU shows and movies. You can you can make fun of them. You can make fun of them. Well, I, I, I make I fun honestly, of them. I love the self awareness. I honestly adored that self awareness throughout the movie. I was just dying. I was like, yes, that's here. It was jokes like that where I was like, oh, Disney's letting them do whatever they want. Yeah. Because I, those were the type of jokes where I thought they would step in and be like, we don't want to poke fun at our, ourselves, especially with recent outings. Don't do that. No, Disney said, just do whatever. Do whatever. We need the money. <laughs> Bring it in. And it was, oh, God, some of those jokes were hilarious involving the, <laughs> how the MCU has been lately. I loved it. It was ripe for the picking. Had they not done it, I, you would have had lesser of a film. It was just just a perfect opportunity for Disney to account for their L's and be like, yeah, we fucked up. Who better to point that out than Deadpool? Uh, so, yeah, with that said, though, and, and now we're about to get into it. Uh, there's meta commentary throughout and... I know Dr. Jason and I, after the film, were saying how it's similar to Spider-Verse as far as their meta commentary. If you could nail this every time, which I think Deadpool actually kind of really nailed it. This is the type of, I don't know, I, I like 
when you could be self-aware to the point and still have a really good story. So let's get into the story, folks. All right. Um, where are our viewers who have not watched this film? We are now in spoiler territory. We are not holding back. Okay. So fair warning from this point on. Um, okay. Let's get into this. Um, Deadpool doesn't matter. Uh, took Cable's little time shifty thing. Uh, as we saw at the end of Deadpool 2. Changes the future, saves Vanessa, all that. He also makes a visit, which I didn't know he could do this. And I'm not trying to understand how he was able to do this. But he slipped to Earth 616, which is the Avengers in MCU. And he applies for a job. He applies to be an Avenger, which I didn't know it was an application process, let alone, I don't know why Happy Hogan, John Favreau is here as the the guy, the hiring manager. Uh, this was really funny. Uh, this is the first big cameo. Uh, I think it also just sets up the film and the commentary at the same time perfectly. Um, uh, because you got the idea of, oh, the Fox universe, Disney bought them out. They don't matter. Y'all don't matter. <laughs> they don't exist anymore. And they don't matter either. They never matter. It doesn't matter what they did. And like that meta commentary for the first like three minutes of the interview process, I didn't even acknowledge at first that he was in the MCU universe. I thought he was just applying to be part of the literal MCU. And I thought it was John Favreau playing John Favreau. Not not happy. I thought he was playing John Favreau. And then I thought he was as I thought Deadpool was asking, w w when can I meet Kevin? When can I meet Kevin? Oh, no, God. <laughs> and I was like, oh my God, is this what we're doing? It, it, it was funny either way, but uh it was funnier now that it was he was applying uh, in the MCU to be an Avenger, but you could make a meta commentary joke on it where he's he is just actually trying to join the MCU. Uh, it, it just so happens the Avengers are the surface level of that uh, of of that joke. And then when you dig further, it's like no, he means Disney, the MCU, and all that. And then of course John, aka Happy, is saying you're not a fit. I'm sorry. <laughs> You're too problematic. How long ago was Fox bought out by Disney? Mm, oh, the okay. buyout. The uh, Fox acquisition, I want to say that was, it was 2019. It was post-COVID, right? Oh, pre-COVID. Was it 2019 or 2018? Well, their last film no, I know their was, last... uh, what was it? The, um, the Mutants? New Mutants? The uh, Mutants, yeah. New, new Mutants. New Mutants. Um, it but was that, completed. The buyout was before that. I think. Okay, right? so uh, the acquisition was announced in 2017 and completed on March 20th, 2019. So oh, because it so, would have been really funny, like be, because the movie after that goes six years later. No, 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 it lines up. No, you're it right. Up. It lines it up. Lines it does. Up. It does line up. It does line up because yeah, it's no. It, Deadpool two came out in 2018, so you know, and the plot of the movie from here. It's six years and he's not yeah. doing Deadpool stuff. <laughs> right. Right. That's six he's... years of no Deadpool movie, That's no so... nothing. And he's not. It doing lines anything. up. That's really it's, good. It's That's meta really commentary. Good. When you can make something clever like this match up with your overall plot, it makes it that much more hilarious. And I didn't even think about it watching the movie. I think I definitely kind of looked up the acquisition as far as, you know, the new mutants being the last one. And I was like, that came out in 2020. So it really does. God, it's yeah, meta meta stuff is like really, if you could nail it again. So they, they're nailing it right now. They're nailing it. You go six years without Deadpool. He doesn't matter. All his friends in his universe are now trying to hold on to something. They're losing faith in him. Uh, he's no longer with Vanessa because he doesn't think he matters. Therefore, he's not applying himself within their relationship. And and again that really works for me simply because it was a dead space it was we for a very good amount of time we had no idea if deadpool or any of the mutants would be folded into 
the MCU. So it's a state of limbo. And I don't know, that really works. <laughs> you know, the Deadpool costume hanging up in uh, the locker room and whatnot. I, I, it works. I'm with it. I'm going to let you know if I ever am not with it. But w would you? Yes. Would you? Yes, I would. Yes, I would. Um... Yes, I would. I think there are times where it's coming. It's coming. All right. Let me let me point this out right now since we're in this area. And, you know, the next part where the plot really takes off. Deadpool, though, did the thing that Toy Story 4 did. And it put its side characters, its main side characters, like Deadpool's family. They were sidelined the whole movie. Uh, Colossus. Uh, Negasonic, Negasonic Teenage Warhead. Uh, uh, Dopinder. Blind Al. Blind Al probably got the most screen time out of all of them. How do y'all feel about them not being... I mean, obviously the plot didn't service them kind of being here. But I don't like that. I That's one thing. I, I wanted to see more of Deadpool's family and his team play an active role. Now, this is... This technically is not Deadpool 3... I understand the plot does not service them being such an active role as before. I would have liked to still see more of them. Even the ones that make sense to have more of them, like Colossus and Negasonic, because, you know, they can actually put up a fight. Right. Where do we stand? I think I'm okay with it. In, I think there has to be a trade-off, because unlike in toy story 4 where those characters were sidelined your question is well what am i trading them for then if i'm not going to see mr potato head rex or ham be part of the main plot and interact with what's going on what am i getting in return for that and in toy story 4 it was really just <laughs> do you like woody and bo peep you're gonna get woody and bo peep there you go there you have it uh and here the trade-off is you're not going to get a uh, Megasonic or Colossus, which I would have liked to have seen them, you know, do jokes and uh, interact more. But the trade off is I'm getting Hugh. And some of that stuff that he does with Hugh is the best content in this movie, whether it's the jokes, whether it's the 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 serious nature, the the banter between the two. Uh, I I think even though you had to sacrifice something to get it, what you got was still worth that trade-off. Uh, and again, it, it, it's servicing what the main actual plot of the movie is. This movie's about Deadpool and Wolverine, not Deadpool and his friends. Uh, or plus call it, simply calling it Deadpool 3. Or simply if calling it, it Deadpool 3. Right. right. I think the fact that they put Wolverine's name in the title, they knew from the beginning what they wanted this type of movie to be. And they wanted it to be about those two. And I think at the same time, that comes to its detriment, which we'll get into later, when it comes to the main villain of the oh. movie. Oh, I, yeah. I think from the beginning, they're like, listen, screw everything else. Screw the side characters. Screw the villains. Screw, screw everything. We know what we want out of this. And we're going to make a Deadpool and Wolverine movie. And I think that was worth it it was messy but it was a fun mess i i almost full wholeheartedly agree with dr jace here although i did like the villain to be fair but at the same time oh. when it comes to like the mess i don't expect anything less from deadpool deadpool is a mess he's a freaking mess he breaks the fourth wall constantly i wasn't expecting um uh, such a precise plot without any hole without any plot holes no man this is deadpool he like this guy literally in a comic goes out and kills the writers of the uh, of the marvel universe and writes the marvel universe in his image it's like that's how crazy this character is so i pretty much agree with what dr j said i think definitely it was you have to give up something to get what you're getting and what you get in this movie is fantastic I think, yeah, it is, is, it's indeed a trade-off. I mean, again, given though the end of the movie that these characters are not gone, so they can come back, you know, if they solely do a film just kind of more or less centered on Deadpool and his world. So it's not like they're gone. They just, yeah, did not have an active role. 
fingers crossed they come back and play more or i i really like their characterization and how they interact with deadpool but yes indeed the trade-off is here and this is now where the trade-off starts to build uh the tva it makes sense that the tva would be kind of the connective link here for deadpool to be you know entering the mcu the tva and mr paradox uh they're here to tell deadpool listen hey your world is crumbling we want you though to join the sacred timeline pretty genius i think uh i would love to see more tva related kind of uh what's the connectivity word? it's not about the connectivity it's about what works okay it works here because their interference makes sense and allows deadpool to you know be it could yes connectivity yes it works <laughs> it's okay it works. to acknowledge it if it works it works no, but it has to make sense and it makes sense here um you know sacred timeline we learned all about that in loki uh still actively running that is the mcu Deadpool is given the chance to join the sacred timeline. Why is his world crumbling? Now we get a new kind of little lore mythos. Uh, his timeline lost their anchor being. And who is their anchor being? Logan. All right. Stay with me, okay? I'm a little confused. And I had to take a step back because I'm like, when is the X-Men timeline never not confusing? Okay? Okay. Logan takes place in 2029. All right. Deadpool takes place in 2024. So when you're they asking said too many questions. No, no, I'm asking the right questions. I'm asking the right questions. So when Logan and Logan 2017 Logan, when he dies in the future, which is 2029, is because the TVA can jump in wherever, right? So but, I mean, they said it's retroactive, though. It goes, like, when that person dies, it like, they were showing it on the graph. Like, it was going, the, the timeline was... It's moving backwards. It, yeah, the line was moving backwards. So, I, visually, I took that as, starting from when Logan died, the timeline starts unraveling itself and, you know, disappearing. And so, yeah, I took that as it was going past. through. Right, it was going into the past. Uh, ruining Deadpool, the prior X Men movies. That's how I took that as. Okay, okay, I'm following a little bit. I was genuinely confused because I was like, "Does that mean Logan had already happened in Deadpool's time, like in 2024?" And I was like, "That doesn't make sense." Oh, Logan took no. place. Yeah, yeah, you see. Right, yeah. I, I took it as in 2029 when Logan died. From there, it goes backwards and the timeline starts unraveling. So it goes to 2028, 2024, eventually getting to 2018, Uh, right? Deadpool 2? No, no. Now we're in 2024. Oh, uh, no, no. I, I, I mean Deadpool 2. Deadpool. 2018, yeah. Or 2018, yeah. It's, it's going backwards until it hits... Or I guess until it hits this one. Until it hits two thousands and deletes all X Men. Correct. Yes. Okay. All right. I guess which, it makes which, sense. Which now. there's meta commentary there. Uh, oh yeah, like, yeah, absolutely yeah. right. You know, the Wolverine dying is like, well, great. I guess there's no more <laughs> X Men well, movies to care about. <laughs> well, not only that, Wolverine dies and Logan, and then the next films that come out after Logan are Deadpool two, which some folks are divisive, but. Then you have complete misses such as Dark Phoenix and the New Mutants. So it's like, after Logan, it's like, y'all should have went out right there. That was right. your time to go out, you know? And maybe it's, maybe that's them acknowledging that in a way. Well, well it's uh, erasure. It's erasure. It's what it's it erasure. is. It's erasure. Yeah, it's like this, never existed. It's like, right. It's like time is going back. Your timeline is unraveling and everything that happened never happened. You never existed. You were not worth it. You were not. <laughs> you were nothing without Logan. Nothing Hashtag without Logan. Fox is erasure. Also, meta commentary. Correct. <laughs> they're they're literally saying your the value of your timeline is based on one character, which 
in the grand scheme of it oh, all. That's why he's the anchor being. That that's is why so he's good. the anchor being. Yes. <laughs> Without him, you have nothing. Now, I'm Literally. just saying, this gave me an idea of something else. But then we'll talk. We'll. I I see where yeah. you're going. I already see I, I where mean, you're going. It, it even makes sense with the type of movies that they made involving X Men because Wolverine was always the centerpiece in all those movies. Correct. Uh, I mean, X Men Origins, uh, Apocalypse. Um, uh, goodness. He's uh, he's he in collapsed. almost all the X Men films. I I think the only one he's not in is Dark Phoenix. And, and first class first class no he's in first no, no, class no, no. he has a cameo i mean, I mean a cameo, in, the sense, but he's... in the sense of he's not the main yes, character for... in them well he's not really the main character in apocalypse but the fact that he shows he's up the moving piece no 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 he's the moving piece in days of future past oh da oh okay yeah i was mixing yeah. it up i meant days of future past but he does yeah, show up in apocalypse he does yeah yeah you know but yeah no literally the fact across the across the x-men films he's the most consistent character yeah. And dare I say the popularity starts and ends with him. It's it's true. It's true. He's he's the goat. He's the goat. So I, I think it's also really funny how, you know, Deadpool's reaction, he's like, Logan, really? What about me? Because honestly, you can make the argument that Deadpool, the Deadpool films are equally, I want to say important, but they are very well done and better than a lot of the other X-Men films meta commentary there as well uh deadpool is asking what about me but his movies are so far removed from the x-men mythos like it takes place in the fox universe but like you never it, see it can't hold it, it down they can't hold you you never see the other mutants outside of like colossus uh and some other uh like minor characters you only you don't see wolverine you don't see cyclops you don't see gene you don't see um uh iceman but it still takes place in that universe. And I think it's a little bit of a tongue in cheek joke where they're acknowledging like, hey, I, I'm in there too, but he's not he's not the centerpiece that's keeping Fox alive when it comes to the X-Men franchise. That's always been Wolverine. Layers like an onion. La yes, correct. These are, this is, they're eating. They're currently eating. Um, and I'm with it. I'm with it still. Um, however, the big twist. We only want you, Deadpool. We don't want anybody else. We don't want Blind Hal. We don't want Vanessa. We don't want any of them. Your your world's got to go, but you can stay. And Deadpool ain't having that, rightfully so, because he's an anti-hero. But you can't be an anti-hero without being a hero. So, does the TVA represent Disney? Yes, yes. Oh. The TVA. Is yes, it's the acquisition. Oh. This is the acquisition. Yes, we only want you. We You're only the want only you. One left. Right. We are the only right. one left. <laughs> and imagine, and imagine the board pitch. You know, with Ryan Reynolds talking to Marvel execs, it's like, hey, it's like Kevin Feige saying, we only kind of want Deadpool. We don't really want your supporting cast. We don't want your uh, your production crew. We literally just want you. We got everything you need over here, and we can make you great. Look at the suit. We look at the suit. Look at the suit we made you. You don't need them. You don't need them. But at the heart of it, they're a family. You don't leave your family high out to dry. That that was a nice side that I wasn't expecting uh, from Deadpool as a character in this movie. He really does care about his family uh, or the family that he's made uh, from his the prior family. Movies. I I kind of like that. I thought he was gonna play it off as like a joke. Like I don't care about anyone. <laughs> uh because that's just what i expect of the character but i this was a nice a nice uh breath of fresh air when it comes to him being portrayed as deadpool no it's um, like he has some like he definitely has something to fight for like throughout yeah. the throughout the entire and he can do all the quips jokes and whatever you want and wacky antics but deep down inside it's like he like what's always in the forefront of his thoughts and the forefront of like whatever action he takes if there's a purpose to his actions is his family right right I, I think that's a good anchor for him the emotional core for his character i i think if you try to do anything else really it's it's not working just having that idea that without them he doesn't care that's good enough for me it does not need to be anything more crazy um but he doesn't know anything about saving worlds 
he knows one person who's really good at saving worlds and that is logan and he's got to go get the best logan uh he's gonna get the logan uh 2017 logan and movie starts here and dare i say this is probably one of the probably the most fun fight sequence i think i've ever had with deadpool uh the bye 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 uh against the tva this uh, was wow this was wonderful <laughs> it's what? the movie could have ended here and it would have been a 15 out been, of 10. That's, I, that's it that, that's all i need that's all i need well funny enough i saw that in sync was at the premiere i was like <laughs> why the heck is in sync at the premiere what is this why are they here makes perfect sense now um <laughs> Was it People one of were... them in the suit doing the moves? I doubt it. No. Oh, there you, is. You think it was someone, Ryan doing there, that? No, no, no. There is someone. There is another talent who does a uh, dance. Deadpool is what they call okay. him. Yes, uh, that is not Ryan. I, no. I, I knew that wasn't. I'm like, there's no way Ryan's <laughs> doing all this. No, that is not Ryan. Uh, but also, people forget Wolverine's bones are still adamantium. They can shatter skulls. I um, forgot about that, honestly. Yeah, me too. Then I was like, wow, that makes sense. His femur can definitely work as a club and just right. bash somebody's skull in. Or he was whipping around the spine. This is some this is some really this creative was, choreo. I, this no, like, was, this, yeah. This is great. Like, this is just like, it's so morbid. <laughs> but he's just taking like piece by piece and using him as a freaking weapon. I mean, this was like super creative. Like they could have just done a, a a throwaway fight scene where he's just like using his katanas and guns to fight off the TVA. The fact that he used all 200 plus bones in the human body of Logan's body, his adamantium encrusted bones as weapons. That was just so, and he's like, you know, stabbing people in like the balls and like uh, punching them in, in the dick. And it's like, God, man, this is really brutal, and but, but it's super funny. Balls. And then he uses the claws. Oh, the claws are hilarious. Oh, that was good, too. I forgot about he, him using the, the I'm trying to Wolverine you. <laughs> that was really good. It was, yeah, this is clever. This is the stuff I like Deadpool for. I, you're not getting this in any other film. I'm no. not. You're, no. Right. Uh, this is what I like seeing. And again, Bye 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 wasn't probably the best use of a boy band song in a modern day film since uh backstreet boys at the end of this is the end that, uh, that's literally the one i was thinking of yeah yeah that's like the yeah that's the two that come to mind so this was great but so this logan's dead he's got to go find another logan this we get our our next really funny sequence in the film the the multiple wolverines that the trial uh he's testing out all these wolverines these are fun uh, callbacks hold up these now hold fun. up hold up dr mondo Dr. Jace did not recognize uh, the cavalry. 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 He did not yeah, recognize cavalry. I mean, that's cavalry. good. That's good because that's. No, you good. were supposed to recognize him. I wasn't supposed to because uh, that was the whole point of the makeup and how he was dressed and how I could see him being a potential Wolverine. That was funny. And no, then within like the I, next five minutes, I realized, oh, <laughs> that was actually. I found uh, it funny how he's chemistry. like. Like, hey, I know you were with our neighbors, like across the street. We'll treat you better. <laughs> he's like, he's like, he does nothing of well, funny, it. Funny enough, that's great because you know they did, they do, they did him dirty. They did him dirty. They that did, is yeah. true. Poor him. Right. So damn, I, I take it when that happened, they were probably in the middle of filming this. Hey, come on, Henry. Like, come, we got you. We got over, a funny man. little. We did this little funny bit. Come on. Uh, cheer you up a bit uh this is really funny yeah you had the the comic accurate five foot three wolverine. oh yeah yes. like short king short king wolverine <laughs> short king mm. uh and then some other comic book it, the nerds ca caught those ones i was like i'm pretty sure those are cover Days pages of future past wolverine i think one of them yeah yeah the one uh there was one who got the hand cut off um the one that was yeah. crucified Yep, yep. Uh, I couldn't tell you which ones are those, but I'm sure the nerds and geeks out there, they got us covered. Please come for us. Um, we eventually land on our 
Wolverine. I don't even know what you want to call him. The worst Wolverine. He's the worst Logan. And uh, why? Obviously, we can talk about that now. You know, he. I thought this was kind of weak. I wanted something bigger as far as, you know, him being the worst Wolverine. You know what? He's a drunk, clearly, this one. Like, straight up drunk. This dude's like drinking, rubbing alcohol, uh, got whiskey claws. Uh, this one sucks. And I was expecting more as far as, and let me know if y'all weren't expecting more, as far as, you know, what? He said the humans came and just killed the X-Men. Which makes me question, like, how? How? <laughs> right. You got you Cyclops. Mean? Gene alone, alone. I, I'm like, how? How did this the, happen? The humans came? Not the Sentinels, not you know, Mister oh, Sinister. Like, well, again, like the humans could be the humans with the with the Sentinels. I don't know, man. Like, yes, I think I was expecting a little bit more there, but I I was fine with like the regret that he has because it's like to a certain degree, it's like yes, you lost everyone that was precious to you. You know, your family. Again, I think like another big theme of this of this movie is the family part. You yeah, know, absolutely. Who has a family, he doesn't want to lose his family. Wolverine lost his family. But I think it's also that not only did you lose your family, but you also to a certain de degree killed the dream of your family. Mm -hmm. You killed the dream. Anything they lived for, you made their deaths completely in vain. You made their, their lives and everything they achieved worthless. And I think that's also like what haunts him. And he became a pariah in human society because it's like, yeah, you literally went on a freaking rampage. Um, oh yeah, he killed like everybody yeah. inside. Yeah. So like, wait, it, what was it, that? He he went. He, he started, found the he, mansion and right. the, they were dead. Right. And then I think he just raged. He, he just, just felt like he raged at everyone in, that was in the mansion still in there. the vicinity, like Liam Neeson looking for a black man. <laughs> what? Oh, you don't you don't know that story? The, was that taken? Like, what are you talking? Oh about? no, that's real life. Let's not get into it. Oh, look God. it up on you know. It's bad. Dark, dark moment for Liam Neeson. Uh, <laughs> Jesus. Um, but um. So yeah, so, now, uh, was he actually killing like innocent people too, or just? The I take that... it that's what they were going for. I think yeah. that like it's insinuated that like he killed. Guilty. He just killed to kill innocent like he just killed he, for the sake of killing my my thing with this scene is i think it would have benefited more from show don't tell and yes and the, the movie i go back to to compare it to is how they did it in logan where in logan you there was this mystery as to what happened to their world where are the other x-men why is professor xavier like this but i feel like they gave you just enough in logan for you to put the pieces together and see exactly what happened to everyone. And I, I felt like it worked better in that movie compared to here where I was wondering the whole time, like, wait, what happened? What happened? Like, why is he like this? Um, and, and you do get what happened, but you have questions still beyond that. Uh, like how humans like i have to assume there were sentinels with those humans because literally how uh, or or maybe the x-men because they always fight to protect humans they refused to engage or fight the humans but i mean so what the result is that they're gonna die from that yeah, they're gonna let I themselves think it's die a it's a multi-layered regret what he has he regret yeah like no it's definitely regret the, just the, they could have the journey elaborated. To, no, no, like, I agree. Like I, agree. I, I, I don't mind the end result as to this is the Wolverine we're getting. It's just I wanted to see a little bit more of the journey that got there. Kind of like what we got with Deadpool. Like why he's here. Why is Deadpool here and why he is the character that he is. We got to see him spending time with his family and how he feels about his family. Versus Logan here, we don't see that part of him too much with the X-Men. They said it in the trailer, and we didn't get it. The third act flashback. We didn't get the third act flashback for him. They actually said it here, though, in the movie. Uh, yeah, they said yeah, it, but we, we didn't actually get it. Um, right. He's like, are you going to tell me what's wrong with you, or are we going to wait for a third act flashback? Um, that, that That's Deadpool to, to Logan. Part of me feels a lot got cut from the film, because obviously the ideas are rolling. They right. probably had, you know, you, we still need a cohesive film. I am thinking a lot 
got cut, there might have been a scene. If it involved a lot of the other X-Men stars, I'm sure they wouldn't have cut it. So I doubt they got a lot of folks back for it. Because if they, you know, if they did get him, I imagine they would keep it. But either way, this is the Logan he's going to use. Uh, takes it back to the TVA. TVA says, nope, this is the worst Logan. Uh, we're just going to prune y'all. Uh, and we're going to go let your, I'm going to go use the splitter, this new device, and just blow it up. Mercy kill it. Mercy kill it. Um, so they get pruned, as we remember from Loki, and they are sent to the void. And... Uh, from here, the film now becomes your buddy cop road trip. We got to get back film. Uh, real quick, let's get into kind of just the dynamic of Deadpool and Wolverine as a whole. Because uh, buddy cop flicks in the MCU, we have a couple. Uh, you know, you got Thor and Hulk in uh, Ragnarok. You got... Uh, I guess you could say like Bucky and Steve uh, throughout Tony their and little films. Rhodes. Tony and Rhodes. Yep. Um, and Iron Man too. Yeah. Any any uh the Marvels the Marvels is a buddy. This is a trio. <laughs> um, Ant Man and crew. Ant Man and Wasp. Uh, Quantum Mania. Quantum Mania. <laughs> Does this duo work? I mean, I know we already talked about it. Uh, how they played really well off of each other. Um. But there, the fight scenes alone really kind of sold me on this dynamic of this shouldn't work. This really shouldn't work. Uh, they're completely different. Uh, Deadpool's a smart ass. Wolverine's a hard ass. This should not work. And I think they capitalized on it really well with the the two fight scenes we got between them, uh, which indeed were a lot of fun. Yes, uh, they were. like they were both really freaking fun. It's just like they're very they're an unlikely duo. And I think it's like, as you said, the, um, the MCU does have the buddy, like the buddy cops, that kind of. But I think this is the first one in which the two, the duo or the participants of that buddy cop absolutely hate each other. It's oh, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the yes. first this is the first one of them all that they absolutely hate each other. They don't want to see themselves in the same in the same picture. It's rush and that's hour. what makes it really funny. And it's also it's like you have two immortals because they they can't be killed. That does add to the comedy of their. Fight. That adds to the comedy. So they're just impaling themselves, maiming themselves, and so they just continue going. I think that's the funny part too because they they're both aware that the other is immortal and these are, two, and these are two characters that like they solve their problems by being aggressive 90 percent of the time so when they get frustrated with the other, especially logan like you know that he restrains himself with most people when he gets pissed with them but knowing this guy who can take a hit and a stabbing and a, a mutilation he's like you know what i'm gonna make him shut up and he just goes in on him. He's just stabbing him repeatedly. Uh, th those were the funny bits. The, the, those were where the comedy really excelled because it, it's like, man, you're not getting this anywhere else, really, with any oh, character. No. Oh, no. Um, <laughs> watching these two, you know, it's fun, nonetheless, because uh, it's ridiculous. You can't have Cap and Tony going at it because that's, like, heartbreaking. So, yeah. Um, uh, I guess the only other comedy kind of duo fight you can get is like Thor and Hulk when they fight. That's relatively funny because they're more rivals than like I don't, I don't know what you would call these two. They no. just this sounds like this. You know what these two are? These two. Um, it's just literally adopted. Chris. It's Chris Tucker and Jackie Chan. No, they became. Uh, oh, oh, what? What? Yeah, they didn't fight though. They didn't fight in rush they hour. Wanted they wanted to. They wanted to. They more or less each other. So what? Deadpool's Chris Tucker, Wolverine's Jackie Chan. Yeah, yeah, he can. I be. guess, I guess he, he's he's Wolverine because he's by the books. He wants to get it done. This is Mar. This is Marvel's Rush Hour. Exactly. <laughs> okay, and them entering the MCU is equivalent to uh, the little girl that they're trying to save. Correct. Sure. All right. Well, they truly are trying to save the MCU. 
something like that um let's see if people agree with this rush hour parallel um but the void you've been to the void before uh this is where a lot of the fun of you know just kind of what deadpool is trying to do here takes place uh the void is ran by cassandra nova the twin of uh, professor x who we've never seen before if you're a comic fan you probably know of her but she has no relevance to the greater x-men franchise uh and i guess she can basically do anything with her mind uh telekinesis uh tele telepathy i don't like i think cassandra enters the a long line of mcu villains where my biggest issue is just simply she's brand new to the story and the overall franchise and i felt they could have easily used a previous character in the x-men films and let them be the main villain for what it's not about Cameo. the connectivity it's I wanted about hulk to it's... smash it i wanted magneto and an apocalypse and and saber to to smash in from the ceiling and be the main villain of this movie actually where are my cameos apocalypse could have worked i think actually that yeah that could have worked that could have worked i don't like cassandra i i just i there was an op there was such an easy opportunity to really capitalize on what they're trying to do here with the meta commentary of uh, you could have got a really jaded previous marvel character did you want and a they, magneto did you want a jaded ian mckellen you could have that works too you could have brought michael fassbender that would have probably been too emotional but yes an opportunity to bring back somebody to just really lay it on how these characters have been forgotten and left here so i don't feel anything for cassandra i like cassandra like and the reason for it, it's because deadpool like deadpool is wacky and like cassandra is so unstable that she's a perfect like in my opinion is a perfect villain in that sense i really i i really liked her powers how she was just like yeah i can pretty much do whatever the hell i want it's like i am just really unstable i'm very like cheery and then out of nowhere i just rip someone's innards out like as of nothing uh and like and to a certain degree she was forgotten although uh, not like in the meta commentary sense but she was forgotten she's the forgotten sister of charles xavier she's uh the forgotten yeah the forgotten xavier like her existence was literally she was raised in the void and it's kind of saying you don't matter again she didn't matter so it goes with the movie. It goes it, with the it. It goes with the movie. I'm with you, but we but, have no we have no history together. No, it's, I don't care if you have if, if we have history together or not. I like the villain in itself is a good. It, like I think it's a good villain for this type of movie. For a Deadpool movie, it's a good villain. I'm gonna call it missed opportunity. That's where I'm sitting. Mm -hmm. I'm with you though. I'm with you as far as thematically. It still works. I believe they could have done but like, better. Again, in a in a movie, there has to be, you have to you have to, especially in a movie like Deadpool and Wolverine, because like you're you're bringing the Fox to MCU, you have to bring everything that was prior, making uh, making everyone know, hey, by the way, they exist, and we haven't forgotten about them. But at the same time, you do have to lay some sort of groundwork for new characters going forward this movie can't just be oh by the way we're just gonna uh these characters existed no like you also have to have some originality and some newcomers come in and like when i mean newcomers i mean real newcomers hell the marvel universe is enormous it's like make use of it in, in, in its entire entirety you're not wrong but this is a transition film as like you're saying bringing in the the fox verse but it, it but it's still like it's still one new like true newcomer and everyone else is that's fine like it's still it still functions as a transition film and brings 
a new character into a fold. That's totally fine. It's, it's fine. Totally it's not as good, I think, as it could have been. I think, I think Cassandra could have been better. Um, I, I don't know. Like I, I like her as I, I like. I don't mind her being the villain here. I don't. I don't need an Ian McKellen. I don't need a fast vendor to come in here and be the main villain. Um, I'm okay with her being here. However, I feel like they could have done her better to make me care about her as a villain more, which I think is what you mean when you're saying she joins the long list of MCU villains that have come and gone where we're like, man, they, this one could have been a lot better. Um, like, which is a shame because I like her portrayal as Cassandra. I like her mannerisms and I like her abilities, but I, I don't know. I, as a main villain, I, I wasn't really buying it. Um, throughout, throughout the run, but I think I'm okay with that. I'm okay with that because the other elements of the movie were done so well that I it almost overshadows it. I would have preferred that it was done better. Uh, I don't need them to be another cameo. I don't need them to be Apocalypse or whatever, but uh, th this is fine uh, to, for me because of what they did so right. Now, if the Deadpool and Wolverine dynamic was not as strong, I'd probably be a lot harsher with Cassandra saying like, damn, th they needed to round this off perfectly, and they didn't. Damn it. Cassandra sucks. Which, tomato, tomato, maybe I'm still saying the same thing because I, I didn't like her too much. But either way, I I mean, yeah, whatever. She's dead now. So it, from what right. we know, from what we they, know, maybe... They're maybe, still just killing them off. Maybe she got blasted into another timeline. Doubt it. Doubt we don't. It. We don't know. We, we don't, don't know. know. You're right. We don't know. We don't know. Um, Cassandra leads an army of forgotten mutants. Uh, again, we get some fun with this idea. We see some familiar faces in her army. Um, this is what Multiverse of Madness wanted to be. This is what all multiverse in the future. They need to take this in elevated times 10. Um because again, it's here. I need it. I I still need them to do better. Uh do you know, better? Let, hear me out. Hear me hear me out. Oh, you you're making Wait, I'm me... talking about her army. I'm talking about her army. I'm talking about her, her army. Oh, okay. Her Go, army. What? What? All right. Saber tooth. Saber tooth is here. Uh Tyler Maine from X-Men one. Oh, that was the same one? Uh, same yes, guy. that's the same guy. Wow, I didn't know he was portraying the same. Well, it, it was a different version, though, right? Of Sabretooth? Or I mean, he, he, he didn't have the eyebrows and the. Yeah, he did. He yeah, did in the first one. They, they gave him a little bit of a makeover, but overall, it's the same. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Love seeing him. That was nice. One and done. He didn't need to die like that, that quickly. Which I uh, knew they were gonna do to some characters. I knew they were gonna be after. I thought he was about to of, serve after Multiverse of Madness with what they did to people like Reed Richards and all those other characters that appeared as the the multiverse versions of these characters. I'm like, you know what? I bet you they're gonna do that again. They're gonna show characters to say, "Hey, look, look, look who we have." And then do something insulting where they just like kill them or one off them in like a comedic way, and I, I was like, I, I'm I'm waiting for it. I know he's gonna kill Sabretooth. I know he's gonna kill him. One and done. It was a one and done. I was disappointed by this choice. I would have loved to see him more, doing more interactions. They said go back and watch X Men One. Nah, I, I'm I'm just not a saber. I'm not a saber tooth fan, so I was like, I, I was totally fine with it. Well, I guess for me, it's the symbolic usage of these X Men characters. A lot of these folks were stand-ins, so I looked it up. That was not Ray Park as Toad. That was just some dude. Oh, as so Toad. he was telling the truth. I I guess I, I'm gonna wait until more official uh, credits come out, but I don't think that was Ray Park. I don't think that was even Kelly Hugh as Lady Deathstrike, um, you know, from X2. Yeah. With the, yeah. Um, we saw Azazel. Azazel, yeah. 
uh, Juggernaut. That was not even Vinny Jones uh, from X Men Three. Same yeah. costume though. Uh, Which that, I thought he came out and said that he wasn't in it either, right? He I, did. He did. But we also this guy, have uh, the Firestarter. Is it Firestarter? Oh, Pyro. 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 Now that's that's Pyro. That's uh, yeah. That's the same actor. That's yeah. The same. Mm-hmm. They got him back. That was cool. Uh, I mean, he had more lines than like all these folks. Yeah. Um, but you even said like Psylocke from X Men Three in the background. Um, I think Danya Ramirez, who did uh, Callisto, uh, the Morlock in X Men Three, the one like show me, show me your mark, the one who got in a fight with Storm, oh, scrapping okay. with Storm. Yeah. She was there. I think a lot of their stuff got cut. Um, and ultimately they just served kind of as eye candy if you see them good job buddy that was for you yeah versus they could do a lot more with this in the future which i hope they do even if you just give them one quick little line i'm gonna be more satisfied than what they gave us here with the x-men mutant characters yeah but still this was a thousand times better than what we saw in multiverse of madness i, I don't think this not the these mutants i do no, not think I, no was, like this movie this movie with the multiverse did oh, so much more i'm not i'm not comparing like movies the like just that the right characters, now. Just yeah, characters. Just I'm, showing... talk, I'm talking about the usage of characters right Spe yeah. specifically i'm assuming in multiverse of madness you're referring to basically the council right like yeah, the portrayal of the, the illuminati the, the illuminati right. okay. i think they handled the illuminati better than they handled the mutants here yeah because the illuminati are honestly an enormous force in the marvel universe so it's like i think you uh, i think you have to put it in like in like different different layers here right it's like or different tiers it's like the illuminati they run the stuff they run stuff in the marvel universe i'm aware like some of these mutants that are here they they can be like you can wipe your ass with them and like and and no one i, can, no I don't one want eye candy it. i think what i i you're right i think that's what he means more than anything it's not necessarily like the mutants why aren't they given the same level of importance as the illuminati it's more or less you're using characters from other universes play with them like a kid with toys, you know, like make make something fun out of them interacting with each other. Um, don't just have one. Don't have your Woody and Buzz and you you get your Woody and you just rip Woody's head off and you say, there, he's done. That was <laughs> yeah. it. Yeah, you're happy. They're happy. They're, they're <laughs> here. <laughs> don't do that. Yes, th th correct. I'd rather them just be random extras than teasing me like this. Uh, because watching the trailers, I was like, wow, I, I I was spotting them in the trailers for them to not actually do anything. Now, like, like, I think it's a problem that because they showed Sabretooth in the trailer. I think it's a problem that what you saw in the trailer, guess what? That was all the Sabretooth scenes. I, that's think, a huge I, I think that's tease. a problem. That's a yeah, problem. I don't like that. I'm not a fan of that. Correct. Yeah. Literally. Might as well. Actually, it would have been better. Don't don't show me that he's in the movie. Don't yeah, he's in the movie. Correct, correct. That yeah. way, at the very least, the surprise of me seeing him, I'm like, oh my god, it's Sabretooth, whoa! And then when he does whatever, if, if he still kills him, I'm like, oh man, oh, that sucks. But I'm still surprised. I'm still surprised that he was here. So what you're telling me, and so what you're telling me, really, it's more of a problem of Marvel PR than the actual movie. I think, I think it's like, let's say, if the trailers hadn't released any of this shit we wouldn't be i think we would barely be having this conversation this is more of, this is more an issue not of the movie itself but of marvel pr that they um, it's still I, both i i think i i'm there more of a marvel pr I, issue i'm there with both i think you, i still have the same problem that i mentioned before where you're just dangling these characters and not having more fun with them but it would have been it would have been better had they not shown us if they were even in there to begin with. I still would have right. a problem with it, but now that they've shown us, I'm like going in expecting something more with them than what we got. So then then the feeling's even worse uh, right. once we get out. And don't get me wrong. This is not the most fun we have with the greater 
Marvel Universe in this film. Now, clearly, they knew what they were doing. They literally said the X-Men mutant characters, yeah, we're going to dangle them in front of you. Okay, that's the carrot on the stick. The actual carrot, uh, we get our first one. Uh, oh, my gosh, Dr. Mondo. Dr. Jason. Go ahead. But go, and, and, and then before he starts, before he starts, I want you to... I, I want you to listen to it and tell me who you believe. Go ahead. Now, I will preface and say this. I knew... I already knew where, where the, what they could do with this film. Of course. I am, of course. I am who I am. Of course. I went on TikTok. TikTok loaded. One little piece of little somebody's made up caption was on there the moment i saw it i turned it off somebody was spoiling the movie and i saw the word chris so i had an idea that a chris would be in the movie and i knew what it, it had to be evans it had to be evans i knew it had to be evans because i knew what this movie was trying to do Hemsworth. so either way no i knew it had to be evans so when he shows up on screen i'm like dr jace look at the blue Look at the blue. Look at his his blue. And he's like, it's Cap. It's Cap. He's Cap. I was like, you fool. You fool. That's not Cap. That's not Cap. You fool. But I, I didn't say that. Obviously, we were in the theater. No, um, you did. You did. You said it loud. You said it loud because everyone was like. No, no, no. I said it when the reveal happened. I said it when the reveal happened. Because he saw the red on the thing. Which was done purposefully. It they was done them. purposefully, and it and, and you fell for it, hook, line, and sinker. And now, and now, let me tell you the truth of what actually happened. You were spoiled on TikTok because you knew exactly who it was. You knew it was Chris. It had to be Chris Evans. It had to be Chris Evans. So, and you saw who, which version of Chris Evans it was. Doctor Mondo, when you saw Chris Evans on screen, what was your first impression of of who it was? Very, very initially, I thought it was Cap, but then I was like, nah, fam. Like, thank you. No, but thank like, you. it was like very, like, very. That's okay. When he took off the hood, I was like, okay. And then when I saw him, like, I just like paid a little bit more attention. Less than a minute after, I was like, oh, thank you. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Now I know who this thank person you. is. I was savoring the moment for the my first initial reaction because I'm like, oh my god, it's I didn't know it's, that he it's was a cap appear. variant. It's a cap variant, and not only that, the version of of who he ultimately ends up being, I'm used to that version of that character having a buzz cut. That's the version from Fantastic Four that I remember. The but are you kidding me? The buzz cut. He grew out his hair and rides a silver it surfer. Who cares about that one? That's the worst one. Wow. Either way, okay. either way, okay. the first Fantastic Four movie, mm -hmm. I was like, yeah, buzz cut Chris Evans. That's that's Human Torch, right? So I saw Chris Evans with a full head of hair, and I'm like, Cap variant. It's got to be the red on his sleeve. When does he have red? When does he have red? But then when that when that bastard said flame on, I grabbed it like either look, look, oh my god, oh my god. That was funny. That was funny. This is how you do it. This right here, this was this was done good. Johnny Storm, human torch. This is what you need to always be doing. So they they scored great points with this for problematic. Me. Why didn't they do Michael B. Jordan? Maybe couldn't afford him. Oh, go oh, afford. There was a budget, and you you think you he think probably he, they, they had to budget. pay him more than Chris Evans? Get out of here. They're probably neck and neck. How much? It was. Ain't it, no it was one way. or the other. Ain't it was no one way. or the other. It was one or the other. It was one or the other. Right. First and foremost, we all have to forget that that Fantastic Four with Michael B. Jordan, bless him as an actor, though, he ever existed. Like, it would have been really funny though if they brought him here. I think it, it would have, but right. I think it's definitely a testament to like this movie was so so bad that it's like we're not even gonna make fun of it. We we are not even going to acknowledge its existence. Well, they did in the credits. I, I think they could have done a meta commentary bit with this, and it could have been like the funniest five seconds. Five. Oh, I'm, I'm, I, I see I'm where talking, you're going. I'm talking five. 
where they realize that's the human torch and they're like wait a minute i i thought he was the human torch and it is this michael b jordan in the back saying hi and the devil's like we don't talk about him or they say <laughs> something like i thought the human torch was white since when is he uh, black uh, right right there you go that way yeah, you I don't mean, have that to was a big thing appearance on the, that was a big thing on the internet too you know right mm -hmm. right that they could have been a bit missed opportunity still a lot of fun though with chris still fun being, with chris right it's been uh damn near 17 years since he's done johnny storm uh and he seems like he's having a blast it seems like he missed being kind of a pretentious little fuck uh this was fun this i like this stuff thought he might stick around a little longer we needed cassandra yeah to showcase her powers a little Just more like this and that's it that's yeah all. yeah he pulled off his skin from there my bar is set for what needs to now be top like could they top johnny storm human torch being here uh let's go ahead and skip to we'll come back to the deadpool variants at the end uh let's go ahead and skip to the resistance uh because you know i was now they're looking for the resistance to find assistance to escape the void and escape cassandra there is an active resistance who fights Cassandra. And this is again. Uh, this is where it this is where I'm like, they're doing it. This is what I want. This is this is what I want. And and mind you, when they reveal who these people are, they do it in increments of relevancy, uh, relevancy in the sense of here's your first person who you might recognize as oh yeah that's you know i re i remember this person from those movies then you get your next tier which which is like you're like oh he's the one that started all this whoa he's here too and then your final tier is oh my god he never even got a movie <laughs> <laughs> that that was it was the sequence of reveals that even it so, made it that, that much better. It made it perfect. It absolutely it made it perfect. And like I think while we're in that, like the guy that never got a movie, I love that like they play the joke of like oh Shani Tatum just like talking like like Gambit with this horrible accent. <laughs> And then Re comes in, it's like, how do I lay it on you nicely? <laughs> Your dialect coach sucks. And we're missing serious exposition right now. Uh, yeah, no, this was this was great. Jennifer Garner as That's Electra. Right. I would I I was surprised they, in that moment, but thinking back, they did. I they did it. reveal her, and I'm like, why can't you guys shut up? Why can't? Yes. Thank God I didn't remember. Thank God I didn't go back into I, my I mind and be like, wait, the where, so where, where did like we? It me. was not a trailer. It was She's not, not in the trailer. trailer. She's not it in was, the trailer. It was a tidbit that they just came out and said, by the way, she's in the movie. And this yeah, was like yeah. maybe a year ago, six yeah, months to a year ago. And I'm mm -hmm. like, I remember at the time I was so annoyed. I'm like, y'all are dumb. Y'all could have saved this. What? Why'd you do that? Thank well, God going in, I didn't remember any of that. Because I did then forget it, to. Then it was as, it was just as surprising, but Marvel got to do better. They can't be doing the stuff like this because maybe some people remember that, and moments like this were not as surprising. Well, the biggest issue of revealing her so early on is that you had an idea of what they could do in this film, and it would have been a much better surprise if you had no kind of idea what they were going to do in this right. film. So that led to you know all these people speculating. And I do actually remember too, and I thought this one was a joke when they said Wesley Snipes spotted on the Deadpool set. Oh, was that a thing? I don't. That was that. a thing, and I thought it was a joke. Okay. It was not a joke. At least they didn't come out and say he's correct, in the correct. movie. Thank God. Right, and that, this one. Oh man, that they, one. I lost that one it. I lost the it for this one. Yeah, because I, I, um, I lost it too. I was like, no. Well, because technically, so you know, um, again, Johnny uh those fantastic four films i'm pretty sure are columbia fixtures right electra 
if I'm not mistaken, is um, I think Fox. I think those were also Fox. Oh, uh, actually, no. Fantastic Four uh, was Fox. Yeah. Okay. So those are Fox. Electra should be Fox as well, and that means Daredevil is probably Fox too. But Blade, Blade. Uh, I don't believe Blade was Fox. Um, give me one second. Um. Uh, so with that said, like, um, if, it, I mean, if we thought this was only going to be the Fox movies, it's not. It's everybody. Everybody's fair game here. So Blade is fair game. And uh, Blade is Fox. Blade is Fox? Blade is Fox. No way. Blade, Blade is, is Fox. Fo Blade is Fox. 20th Century Fox. Distributed. Wow. Damn. Wow. Fox. Fox really had them. They did. They Jeez. were the ones. They were the ones at the forefront, and then Sony came in afterwards. It was Fox wow. at the at the front line. I did not realize right. Fox really had them. They did. Jeez, good job, Fox. Um, so yeah, Blade. <laughs> uh, Ryan Reynolds was in Blade Trinity. Uh, there are rumors that they had beef. Apparently, that beef was fake. It was never true. Between uh, Wesley and, and Ryan. yeah. Oh, mm -hmm. it wasn't real. I guess not. Uh, I doubt he would do this movie if it was, which is why they dropped that that Daredevil line. Like, where is Daredevil? Uh, Electric. Oh, in it's okay. To Ben Affleck. Correct. That's yes. funny. That's they hilarious. They were married and Correct. then they broke up. Correct. But then, yeah, the Channing Tatum as Gambit is such a deep cut. Because yeah, that movie never got off. No, not not even close. Outside of I think Channing Tatum being attached, no headway on that movie whatsoever. And then honestly, just looking at his costume, I think this is where we disagree. But go ahead. We disagree on what? With, with, with what you're about to say. Go ahead. Next. But, well, it just it's it, they're just doing universes where you know. If they actually made these films, this is what it would be. And I, I, well, obviously this is played for laughs, but I like that they're taking established Fox movies for Marvel, and they're taking ideas that they never even got off the ground. This would be it would honestly be hilarious if they do like using like this notion, almost like a like the what if, if they use it for all the freaking ideas that never lift it off and they just like insert them into like whatever whatever movie or series and that would be honestly hilarious i think it works here only because it's deadpool though oh I don't yeah know no, you, have, you, you have to you have to do it with a with a protagonist character that's very wacky and whimsical like this but there's also another line they drop after the reveals I, I think it's like what Blade says. Like there, there's only it's like there's only like one blade or there's something. There's only one blade. Only one blade, and it's like. And, and you know he means that too. Like he's he said that outside of these movies as well. Remember when? Uh, Is this what the, we disagree on? No, 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 no. It, it was oh. something unrelated uh, to Gambit that you didn't say yet. You might say it oh. later. Um, okay. But uh, no, with with uh, Wesley Snipes and him portraying Blade, the the last news that we got on Blade with um, Ali playing uh, Mahershala, Blade, right? Um, the last one we, the last one, the last major one we got outside of it being rated R was that the the director left or it's getting new writers. It's well, just not think, getting off I the ground. The, I think the second director, if I'm not mistaken, left. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. There's it, no it, director attached. It, it's right now. going through production hell. And I remember Wesley Snipes made a crack at that news coming out saying there, there's never going to be a, a blade uh, beyond me <laughs> or something like he made a joke, like unrelated to this movie, whatever. And I was like, damn, man, you, you don't want to give your fellow co-actors some some like props or some encouragement like hey man don't worry you'll you'll get there you know he's like i'm the i'm the only one i'm the only one that's uh, th that's gonna do it so when he said it again in this movie i'm like that's a shot at ali that's a, that that's a shot at him he's saying that I think, again i think it's there more of a shot at play. that no that is clearly a shot at him that's at marvel because marvel it's can't get the film off the ground yeah, he said, oh yeah no I, I don't mean a shot at like him personally i'm saying a shot at 
that project in general. Yes, yes, with, that with, project. Yeah, right. he's saying y'all ain't gonna do this right. There's only one. I am him. I am. At him. as it stands, he will only be him because they can't freaking do this movie for whatever reason. Which it was, it's it works here. It's masterclass. It's so funny. It's so yes. funny. No. But, um, yeah, there's, the Channing. Honestly, there's so much meta commentary in this movie. There's also, there's also another. This is like unrelated to this part. In the in the taxi fight, they're like when they're hitting the radio, a Greatest Showman song comes. Oh, did it really? Yes. There's, oh. a, there's a bit of oh, the I Greatest Showman. It's like da, 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 and then it switches. <laughs> wow, that's that really is funny. funny. That's that really is funny. funny. I was like, that is hilarious. I. <laughs> <laughs> completely missed that um that's that's i like that i mean say that's the, the channing tatum thing. bit Sh say the channing tatum bit because i have no idea what you're referring you to you thought that the the actual gambit movie that never got off the ground they were going to portray gambit exactly like this in that movie and that would have been dumb I to a degree i completely disagree with it because there's you know they are not going to have channing tatum with this bayou accent talking like this yes. for an entire yes they would entire have. film no they wouldn't yes they no, would they, and mind you no 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 i know they wouldn't you want to know why because this was early 2010 to mid 2010 fox where they were even marvel was like this they were afraid to make very comic comic accurate type of characters remember the x-men they are still wearing black spandex for their costumes where they are embarrassed to have them be portrayed as a comic accurate character in this timeline they were not going to have gambit look like this first of all they were going to make some probably different not the version. look probably, probably not right. the look they were going to do something different and then that accent that is comic accurate uh gambit and they were not going to do that for a whole movie. They were not going to do that. I, no way. There's no way. I, and and I, and I feel like they did have. it. I feel like they did that here to just make it as funny as possible. They're like, you know what? Let's show people just a dumb, silly version of Gambit. That, to, or to how make dumb this idea actually could have been. It, how it could have been. How it because Gambit been. didn't need it. I'm glad they never got that Gambit movie off the ground. I'm glad. That, that's just being a hater. But no, sure. no, it didn't need to happen. Not if it's everybody, not MCU, it's bad. Not everybody needs a solo film. Not everybody needs a solo film. Wow. I'm just saying. But this this whole thing was hilarious. And then rounding off this team, X23, Laura, Would which I guess she got have... pruned too. Somehow. Right. Right after the events of Logan. Well, if if we're going through like with the logic that Doctor Jace came, uh, came up with, of you know like the timeline dying. Oh, it started here anger first, that it and... started in the future. Okay, yeah, okay, it's I follow like, now. It's kind of, again, like you're gradually it's like ruining that timeline. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. So okay. it makes sense that she got room. Yeah. Mm. Uh, okay, I I'm with it. I'm with it. Uh, love that she's here though, because I love, love her. that she's here. Wish that they you... didn't. Um, Don't you dare. In a trailer. Oh, that. Yes, correct. I was what very. What you thought mad I was gonna say? That. Uh, I wish they did her better in the acolyte. Uh, was she in the act? Oh, oh, wow! Yeah, yes, that's Jackie. 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 That's oh, Jackie. I yeah. didn't. I didn't um, sure. I wish they did do it better in Jackie. I'm not gonna get into that, but yes, I wish they did it. Did her better there too. Okay. Um. So, <laughs> this is the team. What a great team! I love this team. This is just a really fun team. Um. Uh, Laura is going to be the one to get Logan out of his funk, too, because, you know, I always like the dynamic. It's different here, clearly, um, given that this is not her Logan. Um, but, you know, it's that's still, you know, you want to go off the daughter daddy bit that they established in Logan versus just just her being a clone. She looks to him like a, a father. It works here, too. I like that she was the one to bring him out. And bring them yeah. out, bring them out. Uh, see what yeah, I did. Yeah, it's there. like what she's. Uh, what is it that she says? She says it's like 
it's like you're always there when it when it matters i think it is some, uh, some. yeah you're right there when like it matters you most and you never want to be but you're you're still always there you're still always there right and that's all you got to do here um i like that i like that and also it's just great to see her back uh because we only got one film with her everybody else here outside of channing tatum had, tatum has had more than one film but uh this was nice their assault uh this was a fun action bit again uh, some characters who probably could have had their established universe movie way back when if anybody cared uh right. and that's kind of blade was getting into this talk of legacy you know how none of them matter to you know some of them that... never got their proper endings right right which, which um, goes along with the real life of the of the movies that a lot right. of these did not really have their arcs completed and people forgot about them yeah i i like that forgetfulness element they are the heroes that time forgot because of what the mcu became people still right. go back and remember yeah i remember the first thor movie i remember iron man one uh they don't say that enough about blade god they don't say that about electro my god they don't say that about any of those old school here hulk uh the what's the, the guy's angly, name angly angly hulk angly hulk they don't say anything about him um and it would have been so funny to see like little variants of that in here i at that point you're oversaturating cameos but universal with, will never but with yeah. what with how much fun they had doing these characters it makes you wonder man they could do it again with like these other ones in the absolutely future, maybe but yeah no there the opportunity is there i mean ben affleck i i imagine he didn't want to come back just because i guess jennifer garner they beat that, that would have been got, so funny though like <laughs> if, if they could be cordial that would have been fun yeah that would have been fun yeah. uh and they, even when they were like where's the punisher uh and they're like which one well there was like three of them because there was <laughs> there was like a bunch of punisher films yeah there, uh, there was, was like that, i thought there was two and they both had different actors playing well there the was punisher. the 80s one there was the 80s one from way back oh, when. oh i don't with know with dolph lung with dolph lundgren aka ivan drago um and wow. then the 2004 one that was shot in tampa and then there was punisher warzone which is actually that's ray stevenson who passed away uh wow. yeah so they could even bring him back if they wanted uh but the acknowledgement is nice I, i'm i like that they acknowledged um and yeah no the, again uh watching them fight together was a lot of fun this is actually the gambit choreo was actually really good it um, actually I was surprised by it. I was like, oh, he's probably just going to oh, mon ami, and throw a couple of cards <laughs> here and there. He was he was doing it. He, he was going in. I liked it. I liked it was, how he was better. Going. It was better than the X-Men Origins Gambit action. I'll tell you that much. Oh, that's right. He was in there. Gambit. Yes, he was. I don't even yes, remember what his fight scenes were. They were bad. The bad CGI. It was all bad. Oh, that was the bad CGI. The the the, the wiring the, of the jumping in the air, right? Correct. Was yeah, that all one of those it. scenes? All of it. Him climbing up the wall with his sticks. Okay. I remember yep. that. All bad. All bad. This was better. This was great. Um We need a movie. We need th this type of scenes. I like these scenes where like the one shot, uh, you just see everybody kind of kicking ass. Um it was a lot of fun. Um, uh, they're planning to get the juggernaut helmet on Cassandra, force her to take them back to their, uh, the TVA, I guess, or wherever, Deadpool's world. Um, they succeed, not without Cassandra brain fucking them with her hands. Kind of creepy. Mm -hmm. Uh, uh, however, they come to a deal because they're going to kill her if she doesn't open the thing. Um. She sends them back. And see, also, I didn't like this either. They were, they had an agreement. They had an accord. And she's like, you know what? I'm just going to kill all the universes with that time splitter thing. And everybody's got to come to the void. I, I'm not a fan of this. I don't know why this switch happened, but it happened. Oh, where she was like kind of okay with uh, letting them go. And uh, right. then she's like, yeah, you know what? Let me kill everyone. Right. Um, because she was content in the 
the void, right? Right. That was her whole thing, and then and, then, and her destroying everything would just bring everybody to the void. Right. Which is what was that? Know. What she was trying. So what? This is where the plot kind of lost me. Where I didn't really care so much about the plot. I just cared about the characters being together. Um, right. What was she trying to do when she caught Paradox? Was she going to? So she was going to, instead of that time splitter thing, only destroying the Fox universe, okay. it would have destroyed all the universes. Why does she want to do that? So there's nothing but the void left. So I think it's like there was this agreement between her and Paradox, this like eh, agreement. And she kind of like, you know, I'm fine with it. I remember the agreement. Yeah. And then I think when she notices that Pyro, it's like Pyro is a mole. And she's like, ah, you know, screw this. It's like, this has been a one-sided deal. Screw this. Absolutely screw this. And again, like really going into that, that notion, that theme of like forgotten, you know, like forgotten, everyone is forgotten. Everyone's a reject and so forth. It's like, you know what? I like my, like the deal that I had made was forgotten. Then, well, fuck off. I'm I don't gonna even really know the deal. It's like I'm gonna like I'm I'm gonna destroy every universe and they're all gonna be forgotten. As simple as that. Boom. And so like, Cassandra is mentally, it's like is very unstable. So it's like it is believable. Could they have done maybe a better job in in getting from point A to point B when it comes to this? Yeah, they could have. Uh, but she is unstable as a character. It requires a second watch because I don't get it. Yeah, I think I need a second one too. I and I I think that's the point too. Like I I didn't care about the main plot too much. Yeah. I I just like seeing these two together. Yeah, this is a this is a movie I think where the plot kind of takes a back seat. Well, well, I think that's actually the issue with all the Deadpool movies kind of. Um no, but, but it's Deadpool. It's like Come on, like the, the entire notion of Deadpool, it's like the guy can break the fourth wall. That in itself, I get it. But plot. at the same time, if you're going to try to tell a story, which all the films do, you still need a cohesive story. So no matter how many times you're going to break the fourth wall, if you are going to try to tell a story, it has to make sense all the way through. And I think that's actually my biggest critique of all the Deadpool films is that oftentimes they lose me with the story. They got the good, they got the funny, they got the action, but it's some of the story threads that, you know, if if you keep it simple, like the first one, the first one was the most simple. Uh, you have, I think, a better time, but obviously this one is super heightened by what they I, include in this one. I would even go as far as to say you probably don't even need a main villain in this type of movie. Actually, I was fine with but Paradox. Yeah, I, I, Cassandra being just a character that exists, I think I would have been fine with just that. Uh, her being on the side uh, instead of like harnessing the reins to be like the evil person they have to defeat. Um, yeah, Paradox just being the asshole that they have to like take care of because he's doing all this crazy stuff trying to kill them. Like that, I, I, I think I'm fine with that. I would have been fine with that, but I think there was maybe some directive in there to be like, we need a villain. It's a superhero movie. We, we we need someone for the audience to be like that person has to be uh, defeated. They have to go down. Yeah, yeah, that's kind of felt. Yeah, what they were doing with Cassandra definitely in the end of the movie because we needed one last grand kind of spectacle, and we got it. Uh, she brings forth the army of Deadpool's, uh, which is a lot of fun. Dogpool. Uh, dog. uh, Dogpool's cute or whatever, I guess. Um, Lady Pool, which was Blake Lively, right? I don't know if it was Blake Lively I, in I think suit. It was Blake, I, think I don't it know was if it was Blake her Lively. in suit. I know that was her voice. Uh, I, I'll, I know uh, Gossip Girl, if you like Gossip Girl. Yeah, that's definitely her voice. I know she voiced it. I don't know if she was actually in the suit. Funny enough, though, there's a lot of Matthew McConaughey was one of them. I think the cowboy uh, pool. Oh, he was? Yes. Uh, Nathan one. Fillion was another one. Uh, I feel they get him for everything. Um, I think those are the main kind of big actors. Oh, that I just were some love, of them. like, good pool. And he's like, oh, 
Oh. So, so heal up. What do you mean? Ah, oh, damn. <laughs> the good pool bit I thought went on for a little too long. Um, I, I could I could do with that good pool, but it was still funny though. Um, but you know, no, this moment living on a, a like a prayer, like a prayer, Madonna, and obviously the trailer definitely shows off this, but they left out the best part, and this part. Because, you know, I thought they were ready to just go. And then when you see Hugh reach for the back, and I was like, wait a minute, what is he doing? You knew what he was doing. Uh, I, whoa, as soon as whoa, I saw whoa. him reach for the back, I knew what was coming. Well, I obviously, knew. yes. And then when he did it, I think we were all like, ah, yeah. It's, yeah, it's the mask, it's the mask, and the sleeves are on fire. Ah, oh my God, He's, it's comic accurate. This was worth 24 years. Did you like? Do y'all like the mask? Yes, I did like the pose. The pose was great. It, it seemed a little CG uh, with the mask a little bit. The it's eyes, great. the eyes are definitely the Deadpool CG eyes. Yeah, uh, that that's the only part that seemed kind of off. Uh, but the mask was nice. I like seeing him in, seeing him in the yellow suit. Um, and then even at the end, it was it was also a CG abomination when they jumped out of the. Oh yeah, did the pose. That, yeah, that part the CGI was kind of a. Eh. Yeah, it was like oh man, I I I like the pose, I like the imagery, but like the actual CGI of Hugh jumping out and then landing, it's like oh, ugh, I don't know yeah, what they're doing yeah. here. Uh, you're yeah, you're but- ruining what should be something crazy. I should be jumping out of my seat for. I mean, it's still a very crazy scene. Uh, yeah, the them, lead up to it. Yeah. Yeah. The whole them, fight sequence. That was a nice one shot. Right. Yeah. Beautiful. Uh, the music choice, I feel like, in everything that they've done with the fight scenes was phenomenal. I don't know. Yeah. Like, yes. Who would the think mu- that? The music and the, yeah, the music choices in this movie were spot on. Like, if oh. you were to tell me beforehand, like, oh, yeah, they're going to do, like, music choice for the action sequences, and they're going to use Madonna and then sync. And I'm thinking, how does that work? <laughs> no, like, exactly? I remember, like, the second the second Deadpool movie, it was a Celine Dion song, I think. Yeah, well, that was, that was an original Celine. That was an Celine. original, but it was right. Celine Dion. Right. Yeah. Well, um, she just did the opening number. I don't think it played during the action, but um, st- nonetheless, Deadpool has not missed music selection wise. Uh, That's crazy. Yeah, no, they they living uh t- not living on a prayer like a prayer. Uh, yeah, I don't, I don't. Uh, what? Well, because we've been praying for this moment, this team up. Correct. Uh, they knew what they were doing with they that put song like for one of the wolverine deadpool battle se- uh, sequences footloose <laughs> they put footloose did they use footloose they they use Wait, they footloose. did in what scene if the one in the taxi the one in the car the one oh in the... i was when trying to remember what song played uh w- was there one major song that played I think in it was that... switching it was switching along uh it was switching a lot I but gotta I go think back one and of them, watch it. One of them was definitely Footloose. Okay. Okay. Gotta go back because yeah, no, I don't think they missed soundtrack wise. Um, this, this is a movie I would actually go back and watch. Funny enough. Oh yeah, I mean, this is the type of movie you're gonna notice something that you didn't notice the first time around. Yeah. So I think um, it definitely be be worth watching again. Um, <laughs> all the Deadpool's heal, but Peter Pool is the one. That makes them stop all their fighting and whatnot. Uh, of all people, Peter, um, Pool. Peter Pool, um, sure. Uh, Deadpool and Wolverine end up both wanting to be the hero and play the sacrifice card, so they both get to do it. Um, and they save the day. Uh, Cassandra gets obliterated by her own doing in the messing around with the thing. And uh, uh, Hunter B-15 from Loki shows up and says, hey, look what y'all did. You made another anchor being to where I guess they're both now serving as the anchor being. To I take it. What? 616? No, no. Of their universe. Because their universe is no longer imploding. Okay. Okay. Yeah. 
So that's the Fox universe, right? Correct. And I think the meta commentary is we are not going to just erase these characters. We are going to continue to acknowledge them and bring them. We have the multiverse function, so we will now use it to fold them in. We don't have to just up in, delete all this history, all this legacy. I mean, again, Kevin Feige was on X-Men, the original one. Yeah. He's been around since the beginning. He, he is your God, I understand. He's not my God. But his, his legacy, too, is entangled with all these films. It is. Sure. You cannot up and forget them. I, listen, whenever he does right, you, you praise him to high heaven saying, he's our Lord and Savior, Kevin. But when he does something wrong, which he has, you don't want to acknowledge those. But I, it's I okay. Do. It's okay. Whatever. Logan's here to stay, which I like. So this and a 90 years old, right? That I, I feel like that was like this is that solidified he, it yeah that that solidified it they're not leaving it up to interpretation to be like oh will he come back will he not come back he is coming back in what capacity we don't know but that paycheck is gonna tell him a lot and it's gonna be a big one yeah uh i welcome it i'm fine with it on if he wants to keep doing it let him and i, I think one of the biggest fears too was that in bringing him back they're somewhat disgracing uh logan. what logan right logan the movie did i feel like they still have not disgraced that because he's still dead in that timeline yes. that, that, that it's not like they went back and resurrected him from the ground and now that invalidates everything from that movie this is a different logan this is a different one multiverse yay we could keep doing this for years to come bring bring in alternate versions of all these characters go ahead that's, the, that's the loophole. That's the loophole. That's the loophole. So till he's 90, do it. Do it. But at the same time, because they, I guess, I don't know what happened to Blade and Elektra and Channing Tatum Gambit, but uh, Laura is now there, which I take it is what I was saying earlier with this past the torch. I'm pretty sure this is, they're basically saying, Anybody in that final shot with Deadpool there, and his there, family? There it is. There, there it is. Right. Correct. Correct. Yeah. And I like Laura. If if they want to make X-23 like the MCU's Wolverine, I'm with that. You know, if if like if Logan is just playing a daddy figure in the background and she's like, I mean, shoot, if they're really doing the Young Avengers, she fits right in. Um, oh, I, I, I welcome that. No. Yeah, yeah, you that. see it now. I don't you see it, it now. Don't you see it, it now. It's there. It's there. Where's the connectivity? Where's it going to go in the future? She's, she's a young Avenger. She's young. They did it on purpose. All these new, these phase five and phase four, each keep bringing in a, a new young Avenger. There, there it is. Gross. No, it works. I'm not saying it. I, I'm not saying it's not there. I'm saying it's gross. That's You're terrible. it. It works and it's beautiful. Kevin can't do no wrong. <laughs> Kevin! Everything, Kevin! Is calculated. Everything is calculated. Sure. Everything is calculated. Nothing's by accident or desperation. Everything is calculated. Um, but, um, that's our film, right? Right. That's it. That's it. That's it. That's the movie. Happily ever after. And they're all here. They're here to stay. When will we see them again? What is next for phase? We're still in phase five. We barely had any entries in phase five. Um, shoot. Ant-Man. Guardians 3. Are Wait, we doing movies only or all projects? Shows. all. Sh so, yeah. Guardian so, of Ant-Man. Guardians, Guardians. Secret Invasion. Secret Invasion. Tomorrow, what if tomorrow. season two? The Marvels. the Marvels and this Echo Echo Oh, forgot about that. 
can't forget echo um That's it. and then this right yeah. yeah and then so next on the slate i think iron heart is still slated to come out this year I think um, so. Yeah, that's a show movie. Show, show, show. Sure. Eh, right, I'm not gung ho about it. Um, film. I I can't. I think that's it for shows. If not, if not, uh, I think what if season three is also coming out this year. Um. So the the next movie is Brave uh, Captain America, right? Captain America. Yeah. Okay. Uh there's three movies slated for 2025. Cap which is like done. That film is done. I don't Oh, Fantastic I'm... 4. Fantastic okay. 4. Yep. That's filming all this year. Okay. Um and The Thunderbolts. Mm -hmm. Which I believe they wrapped up their filming as well. Okay. And then 2026 is recently announced Avengers Doomsday which I imagine I don't know if they're saving the next big multiverse bout because everything we just listed is not multiverse related but I imagine the next time we see Deadpool or Wolverine will be one of the Avenger films I can't really see them coming up anywhere else as of right now yeah I don't. I don't even think really they have plans, uh, solidified plans on when yeah. bring these characters back in. They just set the groundwork for, here they are, this is where they're gonna be. If you want to come and see them, or if you expect to see them, they're gonna be right here. You know where to find them. They're not off drifting somewhere in limbo like pre Deadpool three, where we're like, where is he? Where's Deadpool? He's supposed to come in here already. Now you know where he is. Uh, as to where you see him, that's that's anyone's guess, including the uh Kevin. Kevin doesn't know when he's bringing him back either. He just knows mm -hmm. he made a solid outing. He's like, all right, let them rest for like a couple years. Yeah, I only can see them really coming. I don't even know. Again, I don't know how big of a multiverse idea Doomsday will be, but Secret Wars should be a a probably a, a sensible point to kind of have them interact with others yeah secret, um, secret wars has to be like grandiose that i i could see them in there yeah yeah um i know hugh jackman came out and said he think it'd be fun if him and ryan reynolds got to beat up tom holland so um oh, yeah that could be a thing uh they did tease in one of those when he was looking for the wolverine variants there was the wolverine that was fighting the hulk that was cool. That could be fun if they ever. Also, tried. the Deadpool Spider Man team up. Oh yeah, um, they're a thing. They're a that thing. is that's a thing. Yep. Ah uh, yeah yeah maybe 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 Spider Man. Spider Man Four. Nah nah I think Spider Man Four they're trying to do something with Daredevil so I think they're gonna try to keep it a little light. Mm. But. I think, yeah, one of the Avenger films probably would be the most sensible to bring them yeah. back. Unless they know what they're going to do with the X-Men, which we're still waiting on. X-Men. Because the only last time we saw X-Men was at the end of the Marvels. And uh, there, was a, there was an offhanded comment that was made recently after the movie where they said uh adamantium is being introduced into the MCU oh, from yeah. the celestials correct or it was um, it, it either it is being introduced or it was introduced it, the the celestial is made out of adamantium okay yeah so it, this time the sick earth 6 616's six wolverine i guess does not exist yet whatever version of that would come out uh right now. right because this is a variant right uh to be explored in cap four so my could god I... <laughs> it's gonna be great that movie's gonna be bad but whatever you're wrong you're wrong you're gonna you're gonna eat those words and you're just gonna like, say just like dr mondo said i i'd rather go in low expectations and be proven that's wrong fine. that's that's fine and be proven wrong 
um D deadpool was the one movie where i went in with high expectations like the good old days with the mcu and those expectations were met now <laughs> that movie's good uh this is the most expensive movie with the reshoots of the reshoots it's gotta be good right <laughs> right it better be good just you wait i'm gonna ask you how does it taste wait wait, wait. Aren't you the one that goes in with no expectations? Yeah, I I'm in. I'm in expectations. Wait, no, 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 no. Just you wait. Just you wait means it's gonna be good. Hey, I want this to be on on record here because I said it. Just you wait. Just you wait. My That's expectations are still mid. Wait. My expectations are still mid, but I you're do believe mid. you're saying it's gonna be good. No, nope, two good. different things. Beliefs and expectations, two different things. No, just it's okay. It's okay. No, nope, two different things. I don't expect the Lord and Savior to do his work. I believe he will. Oh, so you so you do admit that Kevin Feige is your Lord and Savior then? No. I'm just giving you <laughs> just, the difference between the two. No, just stop. Just stop. Two different you're, things. You're two different things. Embarrassing yourself. All right, final scores of Deadpool and Wolverine. I, I give it a nine. A what? A nine. A nine. Oh, oh, no. I'm, Final I, thoughts? Just a nine? Oh, you cut off. So, yeah, I, I, I give it a nine out of ten. Just, like, such a fun movie. Honestly, it's like, this is what the MCU should be doing. Like, this is the perfect movie for people who are comic book nerds and the people who are not comic book nerds alike. It was action-packed, fun, whimsical, witty, and also had like a little bit of heart in it. And you know, these are characters that you know they like the actors themselves. And I think the people who wrote wrote the movie do care about these characters. And you can Ryan Reynolds being one of them. Yeah. And you can definitely see it in this movie. Um, this lets you know that the MCU still has a little has some spark in it. And this is what you should be doing to do, to be what you were before, which was great. There are new things that you can do to be great. You don't need to always go back into the past, which is what they're doing now. So that's why I give this movie a 9 out of 10. Is the MCU saved again? Well, for me, Deadpool, is, Deadpool and Hugh Jackman are Marvel Jesus. They saved it. We're back. I don't think yeah. we're back. I think they. I think oh, they. You, gave, you gave what? I think they gave Marvel a second wind. A second and, wind. And put them on the on the path of salvation. I feel it. I feel it. Um. I kind of feel like scores are arbitrary uh, when it comes to some of the some of these things. Uh, I could give it like an eight or a nine. I. I, I I enjoyed the movie for what it was. I had problems with it when it came to like the overall plot and the main villain, but the parts that were good, they were overwhelmingly good. Um, and that's what I went in there to. I, I did not go into Deadpool wondering who is the main villain or they better have a good villain or they better have a good plot that ties into the grander MCU. I went in with expectations of, I want to see these two bastards go at each other. I want to see them banter and I want to laugh. I got all of that. I left satisfied. I left satisfied. So eight, nine, whatever. It was a great movie. I had fun with it. It is a very fun movie. I had fun. They delivered on a lot of the promises, sight gags, Deadpool and Wolverine being Deadpool and Wolverine, and lays some pretty good groundwork for the future. And I love the meta commentary. I have my nitpicks with some of the storytelling points. That's just me. I was sitting at an eight leaving the movie theater. I think I'll give it an 8.5. I think that's a fair grade. I'll give it an 
but nonetheless they did their thing are we back uh, were we ever gone that's all i needed to hear from you <laughs> out of your mouth you're right i know that's not a joke either i know that's not a joke we have ebbs and flows we it's never okay. left we never left we, we never had flow. a flow we can ebb and flow but overall 34 films in we still got it mcu still got it. dcu could never james they gunn could never, never and they did it james gunn's got a ways to go and after watching twisters which features the new superman it, they got a ways to go no, that's the only acting credit i've seen him in so whatever sure. Either way, Deadpool and Wolverine, folks. That is it from us here at the Yonko table, talking about the 34th film from the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Thank you for listening on all your various podcast stations. Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, wherever you listen to the podcast. Thank you for your support on social media, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, YouTube with Dr. Jason Turney. And of course, if you ever like to duke it out with us, Please, we have the Discord link below. Dr. Mondo will come in there. Guns blazing if you dare have good things to say about the MCU. Dr. Jace will gaslight you the whole way, and I will be there side by side to defend the MCU with you. So please sound off below. But that is it from us here at the Yonko table. I'm your Yonko host, Grandmaster Hoop. Fellow Yonko, Dr. Jay's attorney, and Supernova, Dr. Mondo. How shall we close this? I think it's obvious the way we should close it. There's only I, one way. Wait a minute. I, I'm doing this tonight. Y'all probably gonna start a fight. <laughs> I was thinking, life is a mystery. Everyone must stand alone. Oh, we're, we're shy. I hear you call my name, and it feels like home. <laughs> when you, you call, call my name, name, it's like a little <laughs> prayer. I'm down on my knees. I want to take you. They took us there. They did it.